Okay, next item on the agenda. Don't, we're not going anywhere. Um, meeting with DPW Director Jeffrey Howland for an update on the 2019 construction projects. I'll start while Valerie gets up the maps. Good evening, uh, Jeff Howland again, DPW Director. And I was asked to present to the Board of Selectmen tonight a list of the projects and somewhat of the time frame for both mass highway projects that are going on in town this summer, but also town uh, projects that we anticipate will also be constructed this summer. Uh, first, I'll start with the, which one do I hit? Down. Down. <coughs> Page down. First is the, the two major mass highway projects that are currently ongoing. The first is the Main Street, the completion of the Main Street reconstruction uh, from the 290 uh, on ramps to uh, Maple Ave. Uh, contractors started back last Monday, is finishing up the drainage at the old mill. Uh, Main Street intersection and has some minor other drainage improvements uh, and should be completed in the next week or so with that drainage. They are starting the process of redoing the signals at Old Mill in, in Main Street. The contractor anticipates, though I don't have a definitive schedule yet, is to start milling the roadway at the end of April in which the entire road is being milled. There are sections of the road that are being completely reconstructed. They are working with a design engineer now to alter those locations because originally they had one half would maybe be milled of the road and the other half be um, cut down 18 inches. So they're looking at more of making it so that you, it's not having an 18-inch drop from one side to the other. So they're working that out. They should have that resolved this week. Uh, and so the idea was to mill, or the plan right now schedule is to mill and reconstruct in April. Find a course paving going down by mid-May. Um, there is some discussion of paving at night, but we're not sure the paving will happen at night. The pavers are now saying they'll be done during the day, which is an added um, traffic congestion issue that we are going to work around. Uh, over the summer, the contractor will be installing the curb, curbing and sidewalks, and then top course pavement will be done in end of October, with the final completion, striping, et cetera, will be all completed by the end of November. The 140, or, yeah, 140 bridge over 290 is currently has started. ETNL is the contractor. They arrived last week, and they're going to take the first month or so doing some little bit of tree clearing and the utility cutovers. All of the utilities, except for gas, are located on the southbound lanes. All of those utilities are being relocated or being cut over to be on the northbound side. That will take a couple of months to do that. There is uh, water main, uh, uh, Eversource, Verizon, Selco, all have to be moved over to the northbound lanes. Once the utility cutover is completed, they will close the southbound side completely and start the demolition of the deck and all the steel. <coughs> that will take, that, they anticipate that to start sometime in mid-June, and that will take until next year before they actually uh, put the deck on the uh, uh, southbound lane. Or I'm, I'm sorry, in the north, northbound lane, so they'll close in the northbound side, I'm sorry. Uh, they will also relocate all the utilities that are currently located in the southbound lane on the new portion of the northbound bridge. Once that work is all completed and all the utilities are tied in, they will close the southbound side and start demoing the southbound side. So they're going to do the northbound first and then the southbound side. To, Mr. Uh, Chairman, sure. could you remind us of the sense of the entire length of that project? So the entire length of the project currently goes just north of the barnard Wachusett Street intersection to several hundred feet into the town of Boylston. 
Okay, sloppy language on my part. How about the time frame? So the time frame is they anticipate the project will take until the spring of 2021. Thank you. Oh, All right, Valerie. You don't want to help. Take the batteries out. Would I start over again? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just sit down. Just once. All right. Okay. The current, and the, the, what's in your packet actually just says uh, 2019 Chapter 90 paving projects. I've added the word preliminary list to that as we have just recently received uh, better numbers for construction costs. We actually just received those today from another town that has just put out several paving jobs. And so we've been looking at <coughs> what projects to do. Obviously, we know that there are some roads that are in that need to be uh, improved. And on our list of primary roads to be done are Lake Street from Grafton Street to Route 9, which was done over the last couple of years with the improvement of the water mains and the drainage system within those roads. So that will be a partial milling and overlay and a partial reconstruction of the worst sections of those roads. So there'll be full depth removal of the uh, material and gravel. We are also planning on relocating the sidewalk, which currently has as a small grass strip. So we'll be moving the sidewalk, we're putting berm on both sides, putting a sidewalk in, the, in new handicap ramps. Uh, several sections of that sidewalk are in extremely poor condition. Uh, and there will be, our Selco will be relocating 17 poles. There are a couple of catch basins that need to be updated, which are on the section between Spruce and Route 9. Those will be uh, redone. And then we're also going to make the, the cross section of the road more uniform. Currently, the road goes from 24 feet to 30 feet to 17 feet to 20 feet. So we're going to make it all 24 feet the entire length. Except as we get closer to Route 9, then we'll widen out as it currently does. The second is Francis Ave. Francis Ave, they are finishing up the water main project between uh, Main Street and Patton. Uh, that section of the road is, was in poor condition before the water main and the drainage improvements, which were done in 2018, were completed. Uh, the water main was, was redone uh, as re knowing that we were going to repave this road, and that will be a full depth reconstruction of that road from, France, I mean, from Maine to Patton. Uh, the third one on, that, on the list of roads that will be done will be South Street from uh, Route 20 to Brook Street intersection. Uh, that will be a full depth replacement also. Uh, we had, that road is in poor condition after the water main was installed several years ago. Uh, we are also going to be doing some minor drainage improvements. There is no really drainage in that road now, so we can't really upgrade the drainage in terms of putting uh, underground structures and piping in, but we are going to be trying to take out some of the uh, low spots where we have flooding issues now. Uh, we're also going to widen that road. If you go past on Homber Academy, it goes, there's a hump in the road, which is also very narrow. We're going to uh, make a, a standard pavement width on that one. I believe it's 20 feet wide, the entire length. So it will be more of a uniform width versus getting narrower. We can't do anything with the hill at, that, at the academy, but we are at least widening the road, making it a little safer. Uh, we anticipate on putting these projects out to bid next week uh, with a bid opening sometime <coughs> in early May. If the numbers come in where we're hoping they do come in, where they're similar to last year, we do have three or four milling projects, which are, we are gonna hold off on until we know we have adequate funding. And just so, so under the, the 2000 and FY20, we have 1.2 million in um, Chapter 90 funds. Uh, if we have funding available, we will be looking at doing a milling and overlay of Longfellow Road, Jill Circle, Westport Circle, and uh, Flanagan Drive. Flanagan Drive is off of Francis Ave. Jill Circle is off of Lake Street. 
Longfellow goes between Wachusett and <coughs> Browning Road. And Westport Circle is a small little cul-de-sac off of, is it Roberts? It's a road right here near the center of town. It's a very short, only a 200 foot long cul-de-sac. Mr. Chairman. Um, Selectman Kane. Jeff, if these aren't the result of, uh, if the roadway has not had a water or sewer improvement on it, are these still based on the pavement management system that we did several years ago with Central yes. Mass? Yes. Okay, so, thanks. So the, the roads that I just listed, actually all seven or so of these roads were listed in my previous letter that I had sent to Selectman on these are the projects yep. we'd like to do in FY20. Yep. Um, which we, we under the original or original numbers that we had, we felt that we could do those, but now with the new numbers, the pavement's coming in higher, the gravel's coming in higher, the, the work is coming in higher. Um, we are going with the first three, and then if we have money, we'll, we'll do a bid in May or June for sometime this fall. Thank you. The anticipated water main replacements for FY20 are, well, there's two projects that are ongoing currently that are under FY19's budget, which is the improvements of the church road water main from the fire station through Boylston Street. That water main is an old 1920s six inch water main that we actually, two, a year and a half ago, had a major water main break at that location and it took the, the water department uh, <coughs> something like 36 hours to replace the fix because of the location, where it is, extensive Selco uh, underground duct banks there. Um, and it said it's, it is a very, it's the, the, sick, the water main from Main Street to the fire station was replaced when the fire station was put in, but that short section across which is the primary feed to Boylston Street was not changed. So we are upgrading that pipe and then also making a, uh, a there's two mains that are in Boylston Street now and we're going to interconnect those two which currently they do not. They actually interconnect further north on Boylston Street. And then also part of that we are doing Woodland Road which we had a major water main break there later last fall and that is being replaced currently. It's currently under construction now. The FY20 list includes a short section of Irita Road. Irita Road was a, is a, the section is, is the original section of Irita, right from Old Mill to is about roughly 600 feet, uh, which as I said, was put in the 1950s. It's a six inch uh, water pipe. We originally <coughs> weren't going to fix that or change that pipe out. However, with the Main Street reconstruction, the valves are located in the Main Street, and we felt it with IRETA being on their four or five year plan, that if we wanted to work, do IRETA and re repave IRETA, we need to change this section of the water main uh, before Main Street is, is, is top course paved this fall. So that is on the list of being done er as soon as we possibly can get that done. It's roughly 600 feet. It's, and then the rest of that is 1990s uh, uh, PVC. The second piece is Lake Street from basically Buffalo Wild Wings up to the Glavin Center. Uh, that is an old six inch water main, which in order to, for the, uh, 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 the new Beale School, to have adequate fire protection. Uh, that water main has to be upsized to an eight inch water main, and it's roughly, again, 600 feet. The, water, the school project will be replacing the section of water main from the entrance to Glavin Center to where they are relocating uh, Lake Street, and I'll ex explain that one in a few minutes. Um, so we, anticipate, we are working with the architect on timing of that project, of, what, of when do we go first, does the school go first, or working that out in terms of who, depending on how, how Lake Street gets reconstructed and when. Um, the major portions of this year's FY20 water main replacements is Main Street from the center of town 
to, uh, we have it to South Street as the base bid, and then from South Street down to Main Circle as an alternate. Uh, that water main is a 1920s cast iron. It's our original water main from the well that was on South Street to the center of town. Um, I don't remember it being installed, but um, it is old. It's, it's in decent condition. However, uh, we've been approached by Mass Highway, who, will, who has indicated to us that they will be repaving Main Street from center of town to the North Borough Town line next year. So again, in order to this being a 95-year-old, or actually 99-year-old pipeline, that if we felt that it was best if we paid, uh, change this out now. Um, we did do some improvements at the Holman Francis intersection with Main Street last year. So we'll connect from Main, the center of town, which we also fixed that valve last year and incorporated T so that we could tie this in. And then with this, we'll go down to Holman and then skip over and then Francis to south and then hopefully from south down to Main Circle. That's a question, Mr. Chairman. Selectman Kane. J Jeff, your graphic seems to indicate in the language on the slide seems to indicate from south to Main Circle. Did you say from the center of town down? Yeah, so we actually had, there was, we originally were looking at two different ones and yep. yes, it would be, so it'd be from the center of town down to South Street and then hopefully to Main Circle. Can I ask you a question on Lake Street? Yes. Would it make sense, or, or if there's flexibility in the bidding documents, to have the school project do all of that work, perhaps get a better price, and then the town just reimburse for what's not related to the school? We can discuss that. I'm just wondering that way you're, you're avoiding the coordination issues between two contractors. And that's one of the concerns we have. We're actually meeting with Fontaine, I believe it's later this week, to discuss this and then when we get to the sewer, the, the sewer issue. Thank you. Um, if funding is available, we will also uh, look at doing Walnut Street. Uh, we had our water main break up on, at Walnut Street at, uh, on, down at Holando Drive earlier this, or later in the f last fall. And that is, again, a very old water main. Again, roughly, we're not sure of the exact time of that one. Some of it we believe was put in in the 20s and 30s. Some of it is duct or cast iron. Some of it is, is AC. It is a mismatch of piping probably when there was breaks years ago, back in the 50s and 60s, that some of it was replaced. Um, if this fund's available, we will also add Walnut Street to that uh, 2020 water main projects. Uh, there is a section which is the Chapter 40B, uh, which is the replacement of the 12-inch uh, vinyl lined AC pipe that's in uh, Route 20 from Centec Boulevard down to actually Yellow Freight, so in between the two Stony Hill intersections. Uh, the the uh, 40B uh, agreement or approval stated that they are to replace that water main. Uh, we are actually meeting with the uh, engineer on Friday who is in the process of getting ready to submit the application to MassDOT for the, uh, the replacement of that water main. Uh, I can't give you a timing on that because I don't know. Um, he has indicated that there is a buyer for that site but the buyer at this point is unknown, nor do I know if he's going to in start the project this year. I don't know. Um, the, our 2020 um, <coughs> water projects are being advertised this week with anticipated bid opening of May 15th, so we will have a good number for town meeting. We'll know, we'll have a much better idea where we are and which, which roads we will actually be doing at that, that point. <clears throat> sewer improvements first one is Beale School uh, currently the Glavin Center is served by a uh, sewer main that runs through a private parcel down to Industrial Drive however we do not own that easement and the sewer main actually runs through a wetland we felt that it was instead of replacing that uh, sewer line at that location, it made more sense to send it, uh, actually we can do a gravity line down to Hillside Drive, 
which will be across the so not through the soccer fields, but to between the the, the uh, soccer field property right near the stone wall, and then down through the town's property on hillside and tie into the gravity line on hillside. It's uh, a fairly easy project, and again, we've worked out the coordination with the architect on that that location. Uh, we are uh, in the process of bidding the, the uh, Barden Trimount pump station uh, with an anticipated bid opening in early May, file sub bids end of April for electrical. Um, and that is the new pump station at the corner of Lake Street and uh, Route 20. Uh, we are, today we met with our sewer uh, consultant and what I anticipated originally was the Route 20 Lake, uh, Route 20 Lake Street force main associated with that will probably be bid this year but my our gut feeling is now it'll probably be constructed next year uh, next uh, construction season uh, which is these force main from the new Barden Trimount pump station to Route 20 I mean to yeah, down Route 20 and what to the Worcester line it includes improvements to the Edgemere pump station and for the force main from the Edgemere pump station to Worcester. It also includes a force main from the Arrowwood pump station out toward uh, Lake Street. Uh, we have heard that the UPS facility uh, located on the corner of 140 and Route 20 will be, uh, has a, which currently does have a field septic system. The Board of Health has required that they uh, either put in a new septic system or tie into sewer, they have elected to tie into sewer and we are working with them to connect uh, their facility to sewer uh, at the corner of Purington and Route 20. The Chapter 40B project uh, has submitted <coughs> plans to the Conservation Commission as is required uh, of required sewer improvements that they need to make uh, associated with the approval. They've submitted the plans to conservation. There's a lot of work through the wetlands behind uh, Price Chopper, uh, adjacent to Floral Street. There's some significant improvements that are necessary over there. I don't know the time frame. Uh, but once we have a better idea, I can let the board know. Drainage improvements. So we're doing only a few minor drainage improvements this year. Uh, the first one is we have four catch basins at the, on South Quinn Sigamon, right near White City, that have been a problem to the highway department ever since uh, South Quinn Sig was widened. Uh, there's four catch basins that continuously collapse, and they continuously are being rebuilt. They get rebuilt every couple years. So we are going to remove them and put in all four new structures. Uh, we put that out to bid, and the bid opening, I believe, is tomorrow. Um, but it's been a problem in which continuously having to repair. Uh, we will be probably putting out in the fall, late summer, early fall, the continuation of the improvements to the drainage we started on Boylston Circle, which would complete that project, which takes the drainage from where it terminates now beyond Gulf Street and heading toward the cemetery to, at the top of the hill. Um, we anticipate putting that out to bid probably midsummer for fall or even early next year for construction. Uh, and then we are working with uh, the Public Facilities Division and the school department on doing some drainage improvements at, on Patton School. Uh, they got some issues with flooding at that area and we're working with them <coughs> improving that. And then miscellaneous projects. The first uh, water department put out a, a contract or a uh, RFP f to put in a 60 K kW solar array at the, at the uh, water treatment plant. I'm just going to go through these pretty quickly. Uh, we are put out on the street the imp improvements to the intersection of Old Mill Harrington, um, which it was a condition of the Lakeway Commons development. Uh, it's being funded by Lakeway Commons. Uh, we actually had a contract uh, last year, but it got to the end of the year and the contractor was no longer willing to do the work. 
Uh, so we have put it back out on the street. Uh, we have an article in town meeting to remove three underground storage tanks, and then we have also through the sewer department to remove two additional storage tanks. The two sewer uh, storage uh, sewer department storage tanks, which were at the Harvey Place pump station, Jordan Pond pump station, we didn't know about until last year. We found out by mistake that they existed. They were probably old diesel tanks that were converted to pro interior propane back in the 1960s or early 70s. Sure. We're not sure. Um, and then there's the three at the high school, well, one at the high school and two at Oak Middle School, the which are original to the building. They're old, and the Public Facilities Department is actually, they're, they're, they're full, and the, and they, but we don't, they haven't been used <coughs> since the schools were um, basically updated, updated and the high school built. So both of them are on dual fuel. We've only used gas. Uh, we are working with the new uh, hauler, a trash hauler, uh, looking at potential uh, dumpster locations and actually in constructing dumpster pads to put the new dumpsters on. Uh, one, a new dumpster and potential compactor at South Street in lieu of the existing compactor that we, or the, the existing uh, cardboard dumpster that we have now. Uh, which would allow the hall to not have to pick up three times a week, but just once a week or even every other week, but actually have a compactor that's attached to the water garage or in that vicinity. And then we're also looking at a couple of other locations where we, where the existing hauler is rear loaded, which we will be front loaded and actually put the dumpsters on a actual pad instead of either in the grass or on asphalt. And with front loaded the asphalt, it will end up with rutting pretty quickly. So we're working with the public facilities on locations, and we may, as time goes on, we may replace even more of them. Um, uh, we are, we have been requested to look at handicap ramps on Maple Ave or crosswalks. So we are actually working with the uh, Disabilities Commission on a couple of locations. We're meeting with them either in May or June. We have come up with three locations of potential additional crosswalks, uh, one near the um, town hall and a couple further to the, I guess that'd be north or east, and then a, maybe convert changing the one out at the Dunkin' Donuts slash post office just because of the location. Uh, but we're actually meeting with them in their next meeting, which I believe is either in May or June, and then we'll go over, once we get the approval from them or their blessing, then we will then do a design and then bring that to Mass Highway <coughs> for their approval. Uh, then the last one on this list is the Lake Street, oh, I got two more, Lake Street realignment. As part of the school project at this gate in the town now obtaining both sides of Lake Street, gives us the ability to realign Lake Street and take both the horizontal and the vertical curve out where the, basically where the existing barns are on Lake Street. So we're gonna be able to realign that to get rid of the horizontal curve and then the, also the vertical curve. Which is, you just, where on Lake Street are you talking about? The so barns? Is, so barns. where Wait. the uh, existing entrance to Glavin Center is, mm -hmm. we will start aligning that and actually straighten the road out a little bit so where it now comes up the hill and around that sharp corner and then back it down okay. to the left, okay. yep. we will take the curse of that hill out and we are dropping the road as much as 13 feet in that area. Ooh. And that's being constructed as part of the school project. Mm -hmm. it, two things, it actually, so it takes out the curse on the road, but it also gives better sight <coughs> distance to the school on both sides, both the north and the south entrances. Um, Do you anticipate any... Uh, Tree removal as part of that project? I don't believe there's any tree removal because most of that is either clear. on the barn site or uh, where Ed Parquet now parks his farm equipment. Uh, we are just in discussions with the housing authority as we do take a corner of their uh, southernmost property. So where the road starts to turn, we'll actually keep it fairly straight there. But we are in discussions and have met with DH or not DHC. We have met with. The housing authority who was for the information to DHCD, and we anticipate that that not to be a major issue. 
Then the last one we are working on is some water quality improvements at Dean Park to follow up on some previous work that we have already done, but we've also looked at due to complaints of icing of the roadway uh, by the old storage area um, near uh, about halfway up on the lake. So we are we actually have met with the wetland scientists and have designed a actual small little retention basin on that side and then pipe the, the runoff across the street. So we're working on that design now. And I think that's all for now. <coughs> okay, before I open it up to questions, which I don't have it, I think this is a fabulous presentation to, to put everything together in one presentation, all the various public works uh, projects coming up for the remainder of the calendar year. I just think it's uh, very informative to the board, but also informative to anyone who wants to get a sense, the full sense of the, the, the width and breadth of work that is about to go on or has actually begun now that we're into the construction season. Does anyone have any questions, comments? I have a couple. Actually. Selectman Kassman. Um Excellent presentation. Question about those... Um, Fuel tanks, they're filled with oil, right? Yes. Do they have to be drained and then? Yeah, so the public buildings is having <coughs> those cleaned before we put a project out on to bid. So these will already be, the material that's in there will already be removed. Okay. Second one, um, the uh, intersection improvements to Old Mill and Harrington, I didn't even know those were a thing. Could you tell me a little bit more about what those include? It, it's very minor. Mm -hmm. Majority of the work is to more make the intersection of Harrington straight with Old Mill. Right now, there's a curve, mm -hmm. and to make it more obvious that that's a stop sign. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, so the, there's a stone wall that's located uh, on the east side of Harrington. There's a house right there in the corner, and there's a stone <coughs> wall there. That stone wall is in the right of way, so we'll move that back to the right of way, which allows us to straighten that road out. Uh, there is some other line striping in work in there. There will be a striped island. See how that works. Some of it will be, there will be additional signage on there. Um, I know that intersection's probably been redone 400 times in the last 20 years. Uh, stop signs in this, on this end and this leg and it's, but would, uh, a consultant was hired by the town several years ago to look at that, and this was their recommendations as a, as a fairly cheap, I wouldn't want to say cheap, but it was a quick way of trying to resolve some of the issues uh, of cars not going through that intersection doing 40. Well, they, that's exactly what it is. I mean, people are coming quickly that's, at you, and you're trying to make the left onto Harrington, and then there's someone sitting there because they're pulling out. That's and, correct. Yeah, I've, I go through that frequently, so... Today, yeah, actually. You know, if the pond wasn't there, we could do other widen it, but we, it's not oh, possible. And then I have one last question for you. Sure. Um, could you give me an update on where we are with the Toblin Hill Bridge? Yes. So Toblin Hill Bridge, uh, late last week we received the 30% design drawings from our consultant GZA. Uh, we are moving forward to at least get the to 75% design, and then we'll be back <coughs> to come up with a potential way of funding. The preliminary cost that we have received several years ago was around $1 million, and the number we just received Friday was st stays at around $1 million to replace that bridge. Uh, it would be the current uh, plan is, again, to go with an arch bridge similar to what was there before, uh, utilizing to the best that we can the existing abutments that are there that remained. One more? You know I'm always asking about this bridge. Um, because there's someone who asked me about it. Um, the other bridge that's still there, yes. um, the, just to keep making sure, because your, you, your department has been wonderful about making sure that the brush is cut back, but now that we're heading into spring, it gets hard for some of the residents there to see around the corner um, when they're driving, and so I'm just asked to yes. remind yeah, that, you about the brush being cut. And that's the brush at the intersection with Walnut Street or the, at the, around at the, the curb at, at the, the bottom? At the current bridge. Yep, yeah, okay, yes. Coming around that corner where there's like the orange, like temporary fencing, that area. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Just a quick follow up if I could. On the matter of the bridges, one's failed. How's the other one doing? Is it holding up? We continually to monitor that. It's a different type, it's not technically a bridge. 
That one is a culvert with uh, retaining walls on both sides. Okay. Um, that one is a fill through a filled wetland, where the other one was a bridge because of too much filled wetlands on the other side. So that's why we have to maintain that as a bridge. Okay. Um, that one we continuously monitor it, and the fencing. If you, you know, if you've been down there, the fencing looks like it's mm -hmm. turning out. So we continuously check it. Okay. Um, the chairman mentioned the question of trees. Given the extensive amount of work to be done, do you see any um, tree hearings, et cetera? Or do you think in most cases we avoid any impact? Uh, to the most uh, <coughs> sites, I believe that we are within the existing pavement that now. The only one that I'm aware of that we may discuss trees is there's several very large pines on Lake Street that the owner had requested those be removed years ago. They're actually causing the, the uh, sidewalk to be uh, compromised in that area. It, it's in between, or uh, actually it's just, it's be just behind the sidewalk, but it's causing, it, they're in the right of way. Uh, that may be a consideration for removal, uh, but we would discuss, talk that with, with the owner. Several years ago, we used a method basically where we melted the road, it seemed to me, and then for the most part, the trees above all got Torched. Chip seal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's hot in place, chip seal. Are you envisioning using that at all in town? Um, that is an option, but at this point, no. Okay, thank you. Um, and I can say, because the reason is, is uh, we would, we're, net, we're looking at doing more of a longer range uh, replacement versus a short term, which that is more of a short term. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. <coughs> thank you.